Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Stellaris Developer Diary 251 has dropped and all roads lead to Deneb 2B. If you enjoy driving on roads on your nice lovely planets, well don't worry, where we're going we don't need roads, instead we can build a hyper relay network. We're also going to find out a host of new changes that will be coming with the free Cepheus update for some extra balance and interesting effects in the new patch an update to the unemployment and migration system that I think is a very great quality of life change, and finally, a very special treat and announcement for the anniversary of Stellaris, so stick around for all of that. But without any further ado, let's dive in and find out what's going on. Hyper Relays and their functions have been teased for quite a while by the devs. Now we've got some concrete information though. So long ago, back in Dev Diary 243, they showed us concept art of the Hyper Relays and they told us that they were going to be game changing. But what do they do? Hyper Relays are a rare tier two technology that require the Hyperlane Breach Points technology and access to rare crystals in order to discover them. Once you have observed a functional hyper relay though, in use by another empire, the technology will appear much more frequently. This should cause them to spread in a very pleasing manner across the galaxy. Basically, what this means is when a neighbor discovers hyper relays, you're going to get a much higher chance of being able to discover it yourself. But discovering it first could be rather difficult. You do need to get hyperlane breach points and rare crystals. Of course, when I say difficult, I am thinking about relative difficulty. As it's tier two, this is three whole tiers below the tier five gateway technology that does require mega engineering. And from the text on the technology, we can see that hyper relays form a chain of structures built outside the gravity well of a system, allowing for fast travel from relay to relay, rather than requiring transit to established hyperlane entrances. Using our construction ships, we can build these hyper relays outside the gravity wells of systems, as I said, and that's just like a gateway. Now, it looks like it's going to cost us 500 alloys, 100 rare crystals, and 25 influence to build one of these hyper relays, which is relatively cheap in the alloy front and the influence front, though 100 rare crystals isn't that cheap either. That is something you may need to save up a little bit for, uh, so we, we won't be seeing these probably as early as 2220, but definitely by the mid game, I can imagine there are vast networks of these relays that both you as a player and the AI empires will have constructed. They are of course completely useless on their own, but a chain of hyper relays built in an adjacent systems will dramatically speed up travel, allowing you to jump from one relay to the other with a short windup rather than having to travel across each system at sublight speed, as long as neither endpoint is controlled by a hostile empire. This in essence means that we are getting something like roads or railways from civilization in Stellaris we are going to be able to connect up our systems and allow our own fleets to travel across them faster than if we didn't have one of these networks because a large amount of any journey is the in-system travel when we're having to go at sublight speeds to move from one hyperlane exit point to another within a system. With this hyper relay network, we are going to have a super fast means of transport within your own empire, meaning reacting to war related issues on the borders of your space will become much, much easier. Once two adjacent systems have been linked, the hyperlane between those systems will become bolder and ships traveling along them will show the route plotted in blue as they are using the bypass. Hyper relays can be built in your own space or that of your subjects, and for convenience, relays can also be built directly from the galaxy map, as we can see in the screenshot. Now, as we can see here, there are a bunch of systems with the boulder outline, meaning they have two hyperlane relays built in each of the systems that are connecting this hyperlane. 
Though what is a little confusing about this uh, image is that between the system where we have our construction ship and the system it seems to want to move to, we don't have a hyperlane, but it looks like it is attempting to move there to build the relay. I'm not sure if this means when we construct a hyperlane relay, we can somewhat bypass the hyperlane connectivity if the systems are close enough. I don't think that's what it means. I think it's just a bit of a confusing image. But until we get our hands on it, we don't know. It doesn't say that here either, so I'm possibly reading too much into this image. And if you're enjoying this video, please connect to that like button. If an Empire's capital is attached to the Hyper Relay network, additional effects can be projected through the network using several things called network edicts. These add a strategic resource upkeep to your hyper relays and an effect on all of your colonies that are connected to your capital. Each of these that we're seeing here has a different uh, rare resource upkeep plus 0.1 exotic gases, volatile moats and rare crystals and the effect is plus 3 stability which in essence translates to about 1.5% extra resource output uh, plus 50% automatic resettlement chance and minus 25% resettlement cost. I don't think that's as good as the extra stability and minus 10% amenities usage. For that small small cost of rare crystals that sounds absolutely fantastic and may in fact be better than the stability bonus as it could lead to an overall stability increase higher than just three but this is very exciting stuff I mean basically they're now providing a system of galactic level infrastructure like uh, roads or like railways that are going to enable us to logistically connect up our systems. The potential uh, that, because of course there must be logic behind this in the game to work out which systems are connected to your capital via hyper relays. The potential for mods here for a trade-based rework from the custodians, for instance, are absolutely amazing. I'm very, very excited by the possibilities that this change allows for the game. We have seen it teased before in previous weeks, specialist subjects each have a hyper relay network effect available at only tier one, which becomes active if the overlord's relay network is connected in a continuous chain to the capital of the subject. The first four bulwarks is a bulwark watch, minus 10% crime, plus two planetary defense armies. That's nothing amazing, nothing wonderful. The Scholarium bonus, however, Scholarium Tutelage, gives plus 10% researcher output. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this means getting a Scholarium, even just a single planet, single system Scholarium vassal, connecting it to your Hyper Relay network and getting it up to tier one will give you a 10% bonus uh, to every, uh, every single planet in your space connected to your Hyper Lane Relay network, plus 10% to that research output. That, yeah, that's really good. Prospectorium supply also sounds pretty nice. Minus 25% build cost and plus 25% planetary build speed. Whilst not as good as the Scholarium bonus, stacking build cost modifiers together in the early to mid game could allow you to have some fantastically cheap buildings and therefore you're not going to need as many minerals to upgrade and improve your planets and those minerals can be spent on something like alloys instead. As you can imagine, an expansive hyper relay network makes travel much faster during the mid game while you do not yet have a comprehensive gateway system built amongst your planets. And since such travel is permitted in neutral empires that have open borders, this means navigating the galaxy and responding to distant threats will be easier than ever before. As long as you've got open borders with your neighbors and they've constructed a hyper relay network, this will mean the galactic community and members of the galactic community will be able to fly around at very, very fast speeds relative to what we're used to. 
but I would definitely caution against an over-reliance on the Hyper Relay Network. We've got new uh, new mega structures like the Quantum Catapult that could allow you to somewhat uh, blunderbuss a series of individual carrier cruisers, for instance, out into your opponent's space or your enemy's space at the onset of war. Those ships would simply go take the star bases and therefore disrupt the Hyper Relay Network in the middle of your opponent's space then go missing in action to return home, thus delaying your opponent from moving across their systems if they're relying on the Hyper Relay Network to get there fast enough to respond to a crisis. So this is definitely going to change up the way we play Stellaris and the transport system itself. This is a very fundamental change. Space roads are now coming. But what do you think about the new Hyper Relay Network? Let me know down in the comments below. Or if you've got anything else you want to tell me, I will be reading and responding to as many comments as I can in the first few hours after this video goes live. They're now also telling us about a whole bunch of balance changes that will be coming with the Cepheus update. They've given us a handful, let's go through them and talk about what's going to be different. First off, successful force ideology wars with a corporate aggressor will now result in the target or created empire having the oligarchic authority and the merchant guild civic. This will also be true for status quo resolutions of established hegemony, subjugation and scions bring into the fold war goals. For megacorp empires, this is actually going to be very, very useful because it means you will be able to place branch offices on the people that you are quote unquote liberating. Titan has freed us! Oh, I wouldn't say free. More like under new management. <laughs> Corporate subjects will be able to open branch offices in subjects of their shared overlord, so long as their overlord is not also a megacorp. These are some nice new options for megacorp, allowing them to have a bit more sustainability and survivability in the mid game. You can give your uh, or take patronage from another power uh, for their protection and then spread your branch offices amongst their other lowly vassals. AI subjects of player empires now receive AI bonuses as if the difficulty level of the game were one level lower, rather than losing their bonuses entirely. This is very crucial. Now, this was already answered uh, previously by the game director relatively recently on Twitter, so we do already know this, but it's nice to have it reiterated. This definitely means that even in single player games, there will be a point to turning the AI empires into your vassals if you play on Grand Admiral difficulty. Whereas at the moment, the change in bonuses kind of makes AI vassals a bit rubbish. The parliamentary system civic now allows factions to be generated much earlier in the game, thus making that civic better. You will also now be able to nominate other empires to custodianship provided they meet the requirements. This is a fantastic change for those chasing achievements in single player because it can be hard to make sure that another empire is powerful enough to become the emperor whilst not being so powerful that you cannot defeat them using the rebel alliance mechanics. The Unbidden can't spawn in Pulsar systems. Yeah, that, that sounds very good because that would obviously turn their shields off and not be good for them. Low military intel is now gained at level 30 instead of 40. And they've swapped medium military intel and high military intel around. Because medium military intel is now gained at 60 instead of 70. And the effects between medium and high are different. Medium will now allow you to view the ship loadouts and high will grant visibility of location of military fleets. This is really, really good because you've needed an insane, and I really do mean an insane level of intel to actually see the loadouts on your enemy ships. And finally, we're going to be getting a break here and intel may be much more useful. Getting to that 60 cap will be quite a lot easier in the mid game and could be very important before declaring war as now you'll be able to see exactly how the enemy ships are outfitted and build your fleets accordingly. Gateways and of course hyper relays will be able to be built in vassal space and the Grasp the Void Ascension perk now grants increased draw weight for FTL travel techs. I I still don't think that makes that Ascension perk that much better. It's already a reasonable bonus, especially for Hive Minds. 
it can be quite good to get that plus five extra star base cap but an increased uh, draw weight for FTL travel text whilst being kind of nice I don't really think that would move the grass the void ascension perk to a different tier we're also getting some really nice quality of life improvements to automated migration. So ideal worlds such as ring worlds, Gaia worlds, hive worlds, and machine worlds now have a plus 50% score when pops are deciding where to automatically resettle. They are therefore more likely to get your migrating pops when you've newly founded a ring world, for instance. And I know in the mid to late game, when you build a ring world, it can be very hard to fill it up with pops, especially if you're only trying to grow or assemble pops on only your ring world. You really need to be growing or assembling pops across your empire and getting them to migrate to the ring world if you want to fill it up. Capital world designations also have a plus 10% score and freshly founded colonies have 25% from their designation. Pops will also now pick which planet to auto migrate to based on the one that has the most free jobs rather than the least. This makes it a lot more, uh, that's, that's a lot more reasonable. They are also now taking free housing into account better. So, so far this sounds like some great changes, but we've got even more coming. There is a changer to the outliner. The outliner is now going to differentiate between unemployed pops that have a migration going on, if they're attempting to migrate, and those that are not. A yellow briefcase will be shown for planets that have unemployed pops that are in the process of migrating to another planet, and a red briefcase will be shown if your attention is required to resolve the unemployment. On the planet view, the tooltips will now show where the pops are most likely to move to or explain why they are unable to move, as we can see from this graphic. These unemployed pops have a 5% chance per month to spontaneously migrate to other colonies within your empire with jobs, housing, and decent habitability. Their most likely candidate is Wintered Stain. This is a fantastic quality of life improvement. This means that if you have slaves on a planet that are unemployed, and if you've got fully fledged citizens that can automatically resettle, you are finally going to be able to know the difference and not be confused in the mid to late game when you seem to have a planet and you can't work out why the pops aren't migrating and you finally go in to look and you see that they're all slaves that are unable to auto migrate. There are also 11 new achievements coming with Overlord. Here are the icons. I really have no idea what they mean. I'm assuming one here is that we've got a Bene Gesserit icon. There's some sort of ground combat related icon, uh, but uh, target, I assume the target icon is actually hitting the target with the quantum trebuchet, uh, sorry, quantum catapult. But what do you think these mean? Let me know if you have any ideas down in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this video and the other videos on this channel, and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member and joining, by supporting this channel on Patreon and becoming a patron, or alternatively, using the affiliate link in the description and purchasing something from the Humble Bundle store. There is also something coming that has been teased for a long, long while. We've actually been seeing it in most of the screenshots uh, that have been there. I haven't mentioned it. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers had been mentioning it in the comments and in a lot of other places as well, actually. And that is the fact that with the anniversary, we are getting some new flags and new colors. This is the new color palette and wow. There are a whole host of extra colors coming in, including white. We're finally getting white, as well as a whole spectrum of colors in between. On top of that, we're getting over 70 new flag emblems. Some of these are really great. We've got some fantastic corporate ones coming in, as well as some fantastic rocky lithoid looking ones uh, that I really do like the look of. Quite a few crown shapes here. Um, yeah, but, but definitely a lot more variety. And that is something I think a lot of players have definitely been wanting. And if that wasn't all, we're also getting 45 new flag backgrounds from checkerboards all the way up to why well, I've got no idea how to describe some of these kind of hexagons with additional bits and lines on them. Who, who even knows? But it is very cool to get more options. The only other thing we need now really is a flag editor that we can use whilst we are in game. Let's say we want to change our empire name, we change from a republic or a democracy to an empire, an imperial authority type, we change our name, why wouldn't we want to change our flag as well? Hopefully that's going to come soon, but this is a nice start. 
there is also a new origin that was revealed yesterday. We are getting the Slingshot to the Stars origin. This one, interestingly, is a new megastructure origin. If you'd like to know more about that origin, click the video on screen now.